Mike Horn was six months into latitude zero, his journey around the equator, when he crossed into Colombia. In the Caqueta region in Colombia, for 25 years, it's run by drug lord. For 25 years, nobody could go through. Posing as a malaria researcher, Mike crossed into cocaine territory and was immediately brought before a cartel leader. That might have been one of the scariest moments of my life, meeting somebody that had the power to kill me. And he looks at me like this and he says, I, I do not believe you. He said, why are you really here? Fortunately, Mike had kept a magazine article about his expedition. I take out the magazine, I give it to him, and he looks at the pictures. And he looks up and he says, but are you telling me that you have just walked through the Brazilian Amazon? He looked up, he said, a man with your courage, I won't have the courage to kill. You can go. You stay on the river, never put your foot on land. Leave the river. My men will kill you. So five weeks went by and I had no news and I said, after five weeks he's gonna call me and which is exactly what happened. And, and I burst out crying straight away. I thought I knew he would do it. And the tears flew. I was, I was, uh, I was happy. I was crying with happiness. He escaped the coca fields of Colombia and met his logistics team at the foothills of the Andes. They hiked across the mountain range into Ecuador. So life is great. This is what we do because we like it. He then rode his bike all the way to the ocean. You wonder, what has he been through these, all these months that I just don't know, uh, know about? Has he perhaps changed any, any way? After five months and more than 2,000 miles, Mike had crossed South America to reach the Pacific Ocean. His family was there to greet him. Wow. The kids, they're not really sure who it is at first. They would only have a few days before he set sail across the Pacific for Indonesia. He spent three months alone on the boat. That just made me realize that, you know, man is very small. He doesn't really count. And yet Mike's greatest danger during the second half of his journey would be entirely man-made. February 2000, he arrived in Indonesia and was greeted with gunshots. Civil unrest between Muslims and Christians had erupted on the island of Bakan. Churches being burned down and, and you know, really um, crazy stuff, heavy, heavy stuff happening. Mike's brother, Martin, had flown in with a camera crew and fresh supplies. They were put under house arrest for their own safety. It's a solo expedition, and the next minute, you know, we tell Mike, hey, Mike, we have to get with you on the boat. You know, we have, that's our only chance of leaving this place, you know? <laughs> Mike dropped them at the next available port. He survived a cyclone in the Indian Ocean, only to face a familiar killing field on the final leg of his expedition. Africa, that's where I was born. That's where I know the people. I crossed Congo when they killed people with machetes. And you're part of just the public that's going to be killed. It's been called the African World War, unrelenting violence in the wake of the Rwandan genocide that spilled into the Democratic Republic of Congo, as many as nine different factions killing indiscriminately. They dictate the land with their Kalashnikovs. If they want something, they either shoot the person or they take it. Just a few hundred miles from Gabon, 
his starting point, Mike abandoned the equator for the safety of the Ubangi River. A month away from home, I've got to come through this war. Why, you know, why isn't nature, why isn't it snakes, why isn't the heat, why isn't this tropical illnesses? But it's actually people making my life difficult. As he made his way back into the Congo, he was captured by rebel forces. You can tell them whatever you want to, they will not believe you. I was put in front of a death squad where they shot a guy. I tell them, listen, all I'm trying to do is go around the world. 